Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment Unfiltered with Pastor David. You know, as I uh, want to welcome you guys who are, are tuning in, there, there's a class that you have currently, Pastor, with, uh, with a group of men on sun, every other Sunday. It's our mentoring class. And, mm -hmm. you know, somebody brought up a question last Sunday in our class, and it's been resonating with me. And it really comes down to the stance on God's grace. And somebody in our class brought up, can somebody lose their salvation? So we know that there's an ongoing debate on, yes, you can lose your salvation. On the other hand, it's once saved, always saved. So we, we have these two different types of, of thinking, but it really centers on their view on God's grace. Uh, is there a concern on one side or on the other that it could be focused so much on this topic that is it really asking how much we can get away with on God's grace? You know, sometimes I've heard that question over the years and the way it's been posed has given to me a sense that, or perhaps a suspicion that the person is not really so much theologically interested in the possibility of uh, losing your salvation so much as what is the length of our our abilities to go before we somehow step into the realm of no longer saved. And almost, and not always, of course, I mean, I think this, I think this to be a, a worthy uh, theological question, you know, but sometimes it, 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 I have received, I'll say it this way, sometimes I've received the impression from the one asking uh, that the real question was, is how much sin can I, commit and still go to heaven. Sometimes it comes from experience that they may have with fellow believers or professing believers where they see them doing so many things and, you know, it turns out that um, there's no fruit of salvation in them, though they claim themselves to be Christians. And so they wonder, has that person crossed some kind of line? Is that person at one time, was that person a believer and did they cross a line to now into unbelief? And then there are others who seem to be asking, uh, uh, how far can I go in this grace thing so that um, I can still go to heaven, but live in any way that I really want to here on earth? And so it, it depends on the sincerity of the questioner and the theological uh, basis of their of their question, John, I'd say. And so uh, I remember my own pastor, Chuck Smith, how he said to those who are um, very in their, in their walks with God, taking a lot of chances, he says, I'll preach a stronger message of the need for repentance and mm -hmm. to walk in holiness. But to the ones who are timid, the ones who are always questioning their relationship with God, which there are many people who do that. Chuck said, I'll, I'll, I'll give to them healthy doses of the grace and love of God. So to the proud, he would be preaching humility and to the fearful, he'd be preaching, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for them to have uh, a, a, a comfort in the, in the love and, and the wonderful grace of God. And so the way I've always handled that at night, I have a strong belief that justification, when somebody is saved, that, that the word actually means that it's as if I had never sinned. All my sins are, are washed away by the blood of Christ and, and I'm in the hand of Christ and no one can pluck me out of that and the no one would include myself. I do believe that there is a, um, a comfort that I can have in knowing the keeping of the keeping grace of God. And yet at the same time, that is not permission to continue in sin. Like Paul would ask the Romans, what shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall I who have been, you know, set free or saved, how can I go back to a life of sin? So in Romans chapter five and chapter six, he actually deals with that kind of question. Well, God forbid that we should continue in sin so that grace may abound. Do we continue in sin? No. Grace has been given to me in order that I might be free from its bondage. And so somebody who's got the question, have I lost my salvation? 
is, is generally somebody who has a sincere faith and has a, a sincere question. Those who wouldn't be concerned about quote unquote losing your salvation more than likely have never experienced it. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Chuck taught us something that I, I like to, to use as an illustration. Um, he, he said, there are those who believe that life is like a pickup truck and, and salvation is as if you're riding in the back of that truck. Some people think that the uh, tailgate is open and that they could bounce out any, any, any time along the road, the road. And others believe that the tailgate is, is closed and there's no way you're gonna bounce out. So some believe you can fall out and some believe that you won't fall out. He said, what's the answer to that? He said, stay close to the cab, <laughs> you know, stay close to the driver. And that's how I look at that particular subject. I, I believe that if I'm walking with the Lord, and it's not an act of works, by the way, because if it's something I can do to save myself, then I obviously am trusting in myself for salvation. You know, Grace would be speaking about the fact that I don't have the capacity, ability to, um, to save myself. And so if I'm thinking that I'm gonna keep myself in God's grace by my works and efforts, that, so that, that produces a works salvation mentality. But on the other hand, I'm not gonna take God's grace for granted and, and just continue sinning as if, you know, I never tasted of the grace of God. So what's the answer? Develop relationship with Jesus Christ. Love him, love his word, walk in his spirit, have fellowship with other believers. Make sure that your, um, you know, your commitments to Christ are the biblical kind, you know, where you read the word and where you pray and we have relationship with, with those who also call upon the name of Jesus, you know, and, and just rest in him and have peace in him. You know, stay close to the cab, stay close to the driver, and you won't have any questions about falling out of the truck. <laughs> and it almost becomes, it doesn't even become that important because, uh, uh, and you mentioned to us on, on, in our class last Sunday, is that when you're close to Jesus, and as you just mentioned, then, we don't have to worry about if the, the tailgate's open or closed. No, no. I've been married to my wife for a long time, and I never wake up wondering if I'm married to her. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I never do. I never wake up saying, am I married? You know, I, I just am. And so in my walk with the Lord, I, I never wake up saying, am I not saved? Why? Because I've stayed close to the Lord, you know, uh, much more now than ever before, mm -hmm. but that should be true in every believer that every day you draw closer to him and every day you're much more uh, much more uh, in tune with him, etc. You know, this upcoming December, you know, in, in, a, little, in a little less than a month, I, I celebrate 51 years, Ooh. John, 51, 51 years, years. Of, uh, since my salvation. And, and there have been times in the beginning where I wondered because I had based my faith on my experience of salvation, which the day I got saved was such an exhilarating moment to sense, almost physically sense the release of those burdens. I, that sense of, of my sin rolling off of my shoulders. It was a very real and perceptible kind of thing. You know, and then two weeks, three weeks later, I'm not filled with Holy mm -hmm. Ghost goosebumps mm -hmm. and all of that enthusiasm. And I spoke to the brother who stood up with me when I got saved. And I said, am I going to hell? Have I you know, lost my salvation? I don't feel that excitement. And he, he, he was not even a year old in Christ himself, but he said, you know, your, your salvation doesn't rest on your feelings. Your salvation rests on the faith of, that, that God has given to you in Jesus Christ. It, it's the faith you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. David, just say by faith and not by works. It's by God's grace and, and not by efforts on your own part. You know, so the only thing I, I learned it then, John and I've continued to believe that ever since, the only thing I ever added to my salvation uh, was the sin that Jesus Christ forgave me of. Mm. You know, so I rest in him, I trust in him. I, I've been born again through him, by him, his spirit dwells in me as the temple of the spirit of God. And, and so, no, I, I haven't had a question about losing salvation um, since my very early days in Christ. Why? Because I am walking in 
the grace of God because his word has said, if any man trusts in him, that that man can be born again. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't tell me I have to be born again many times. It says, you know, that if I trust in him, I'm born again. And so I live as the one who has been bought at a price okay. and I've been born again. And so I don't worry about, you know, my salvation. I just stay close to the driver. Amen. Mm -hmm. 51 years, Pastor. 51 years. Wow, congratulations. Month. Well, yeah. we'll have to wait next month to congratulate you, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, we can congratulate you now. Well, why not? Send gifts, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, many gifts. <laughs> quiet gifts, not loud gifts, quiet gifts. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Pastor, thank you so much. And, and you know, it, it, that sheds light to stay close to Christ, that when we're close to Jesus, I like how you said, you don't wake up every morning and ask him, am I married? No, I don't. We're just, you're just married. I am. And, uh, and that's a great illustration. So Pastor, thank you so much. Church family, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this random moment, unfiltered. I want to invite you to our Wednesday evening service, our, Sunday, our <laughs> Wednesday evening service is at 7 p.m. as Pastor David's taken us through the book of Titus mm -hmm. uh, and invite your friends and family. It's a great way to, to get into God's word and just be refreshed in his word. Uh, maybe the Lord's putting somebody on your heart right now. Reach out to them and, and invite them to come to church and even bring them on Sunday. We have our 830 and our 1045 service and you know what a better way to, uh, to, to invite a friend, especially during these times that we're living in. Uh, and so may God bless you. And Pastor, thank you so much Amen. for joining us. Yeah, and you guys, okay. thank you for tuning in. And God bless you.